This is a continuation of the last video on this 1.5 kilowatt screw generator. We're going to talk about a bunch of the components. The first thing that we'll talk about is the screw itself. Uh, the screw in an Archimedes screw generator is the rotating part that is between bearings uh, on your water turbine. The main component of the screw is the center shaft. The center shaft has flights that are connected to it. In this case, we've got three flights or starts. So you can see the number of flights that surround this one are three flights. The um, <clears throat> inner diameter of the screw is usually sized for the amount of deflection over the length of the screw. So in this case, we've got a very long, this is a 24 foot long screw. But since the shaft, since we have to span that 24 feet, we had to make the center shaft 18 inches in diameter. This is a 3 8 thick wall tube so that the center of the shaft does not deflect and the flights don't come into contact with the trough. The trough is a part, is a half pipe that surrounds the screw on the bottom half. And we want to maintain a constant gap between the flighting and the trough along the entire length under all boating conditions. So you make the center shaft basically stiff so it doesn't... Yeah, so we make the center shaft rigid so that the center shaft won't deflect between its suspension points on both ends. So how do you get those flights exactly round to... Well, when we, when we weld the flights on to begin with, the flights we make them slightly larger than their final diameter. And the reason we do that is because the flights when they're made, they aren't perfect. And after we have all the flighting welded on, then we essentially put this in a large machine that's like a lathe with a torch head on it. And we very slowly rotate the screw and we'll cut the outer diameter to final size with a torch on all, on all, on all flights at the same time. So in one setup, we'll have a torch that cuts this. And you can imagine it's going at about this speed when it's cutting. We actually do the cutting on the very bottom in the center. So if the screw does have a little bit of a sag to it, our torch cut will correct that and make sure that the outside diameter is exactly what it's supposed to be over the entire length of the screw. Around the flighting, I told you about the trough on the inside here. On this screw, we've got a target gap of 210 thou. So slightly bigger than 3 16 of an inch, but slightly less than a quarter. On the trough, we've got a target gap of 210 thou. And the trough is just exactly a half pipe. You can see on this side, it comes up to half the diameter of the screw and it's the same thing on the other side the trough comes to half the diameter of the screw but we've also got this trough extension on this side and what the trough extension does is when the screw is installed on an angle the shape of the water buckets when it's turning wants to ride up on the one side and this trough extension prevents the water from falling out over top of the trough when the screw is operating so this is a if you're looking at the top of this screw this is considered left-handed flighting because it goes to the left. And when you've got left-handed flighting, you've got the trough extension on the right side. If you had right-handed flighting, you'd have the trough extension on the left side. So that's why you see them on different sides on some screws. So why isn't it on the other side? It's not on the other side because when this one's at full capacity, the water is only flush with this side here and it doesn't require any extra capacity to hold that water in there. So why don't you just fill the hole, put them on both sides and fill it right up? Because if you fill it right up, the water will just go around the screw and it won't act as it should as an Archimedes screw, it's just the weight of the water pushing along the bottom of the flights. Well, it'll produce more power that way though, won't it? No, it won't. It won't turn. The water will just, if you can imagine if you turn this thing on the end and you poured water down it and it was a completely in a tube, it would just go around it like a slide. No, but if you keep this thing at your installed angle and put at least more water to it, it'll produce more power though, right? Oh yeah, like if, if you if you put another one on here and you filled it up a bit more, it would produce more power, but it's slightly less efficiency. In this case, we had to build a screw for three meters of head. So we were fixed with, we already did an 18 inch inside pipe. Um, we need a certain IDOD ratio to maintain efficiency. So the parameters of this screw are built for its installation. In some cases, it would make sense to put a trough extension on this side to fill it up, say, another 30% to make more power, because that way you control the cost. Your civil costs for installation come down because you can use more water in the same screw. So it will produce more, that extra water that you put to it will produce more power, but the water isn't, it's not used as efficiently. Yes, yeah, so it'll produce more power because you're putting more water to it, but it's not as efficient as just filling the screw up to 100%. So if you wanted to use that extra 
say if you wanted to increase the flow through it from 100 to 150 liters, you could put the trough extension on and put more flow to it. Yes. But you might put you might get more power out of that extra 50 liters a second if the screw were just bigger and only filled to 100 percent exactly and you could achieve the same thing by making a bigger screw also it depends on what the objectives are or what you're trying to optimize you can't just go ahead and put another trough extension on this one and put more water to it because the gearbox and generator and bearings and everything is sized for the amount of water that it should handle okay okay great thanks